Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at the Logic Boss from Abstract Data. The Logic Boss is a logic module that consists of two stages uh, that can be linked together. Each stage is made up of two NAND gates and one NOR gate, as well as the logical inversion of each of those. The link switches allow you to cascade different outputs from the A stage into the B stage, allowing for really complex logic operations. It's these kind of internal connections that make the Logic Boss particularly unique. The signal going into input 1 and 2 are connected to the, both the uh, NAND and NOR gates. Uh, the output, then, of the uh, OR and NAND are connected to the NAND2 gate. The output of the NAND2 gate then also goes to the link channels. Input 3 is connected to the B stage NOR and NAND gates, um, but also link A, if it's enabled, will send the output of NAND2 into input B, on the NOR gate, and uh, link B will input into uh, input 2 on the B NAND1 gate. If this all sounds really complicated, it kind of is, um, but the manual is a really great reference for this should you ever get confused or need to reference it again. Enough of that though, what you really want to see is the logic boss in action, so let's jump right into some patches. Okay, so what I've got going in this patch is uh, I'm using the Circuit Abbey gate um, but you can use any kind of clock divider here. Um, and I have the uh, basically divide by 2 uh, going in here and the uh, divide by 4 uh, going into input 2. Um, so we're going to do logic operations on uh, the clock and then a division of the clock. Uh, and the first thing you're hearing is um, just sort of like a low kick drum sound. And I'm taking the AND2 output. So what you hear is sort of a regular but offset rows. This is something you probably do with like a step sequencer and set to hit on these beats. But here we're just doing it with um, one clock signal that's being divided. Uh, and I'll go ahead and I'll patch in the main clock signal to kind of have a metronome so you can hear how these two rhythms would play off one another. So we have that little clave kind of sound on the main clock uh, and then our kick drum sound uh, being generated by logical uh, an and two output from input one and input two um, so pretty quickly you can get some basic but still very interesting uh, drum patterns let's say I wanted to change the pitch slightly to get two clave sounds I'm gonna patch into the um, and one output here this is going to the exponential pitch of the oscillator that we're hearing um, at the clock rate. If I wanted to take the divide by two output from the divider that I'm not using here, patch that to a little hi-hat sound. Now we get a pretty straightforward drum rhythm with no step sequencer. This is just a clock, a divider, the logic boss um, with a very simple logic operation, and a couple, couple oscillators and a noise source. Pretty cool. So let's take this a little bit uh, of a step further. So here you can see we've just built a little bit on, um, on the last patch. Um, I've added the clock signal into input 3, um, and I've patched a, uh, the hi-hat signal out of OR1 uh, and the, uh, for section B, and a sort of woodblock-ish sound. It's basically a filter, uh, the MMG being uh, pinged um, out this AND1. You'll notice the AND1 isn't firing right now, and OR1 is basically firing the same as input 3. Uh, and that's because we don't have any of the link switches set. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, depending on the link switch you have set, that's the logical operation that's done on input 3. Uh, input 1 and 2 determine section A, and input 3 and whatever link you have here determines section B. So with just input 3 going right now, um, imagine like having logic against a you know off value. So it's just going to blink the OR rate uh, with input 3. So if I were to turn this up here, you can hear that snare hi-hat sound ticking along at the clock rate. 
our kick and woodblock sound are the same from the last patch. So now I'm going to hit link A and listen to the sound of uh, that, that noise change. Now you have the output from logic from 1 and 2 going in and being logically operated with input 3. And that's what gives us this new hi-hat rhythm. Now as I turn on link B, so that both links are on, you'll hear this new woodblock sound pop in because AND1 will start. So the cool thing with these link switches, um, especially if you're working with drums or anything like that, is you can start to alter the patterns with the link switches. Which is also where input 4 comes in handy, as this is a voltage control over turning on both links either on or off. This is a great companion with a clock divider or anything like that, but another th a very handy thing that I like using logic modules for is synchronizing or dealing with two asynchronous clocks. Um, and one of my favorite things is generating pseudo-random, semi-random clocks. So let's, let's try that out. Okay, in this example we're going to be using the Logic Boss to generate some pseudo-random gates um, or clocks. We have two clocks going into one and two. They're just two channels uh, cycling maths uh, at different rates. And then the third input is going to be our main clock signal that we want to have these gates synchronized to. Um, most important, we have the link B switch lit. And our outputs are going to be OR1 for the main sync tempo. Uh, that's the main clock. The AND1 output is going to be random gate number one and the AND2 output, uh, both of stage B, are going to be uh, our random clock uh, number two. And uh, just set the two clocks uh, going into one and two different rates. Depending on the way they change, uh, you'll get different patterns out of these outputs. Um, and just a nice steady clock at input three. Let's take a listen to what that sounds like. Uh, I patched a little noise source off this, uh, actually this this trigger output so you can hear how these two play off of that. As you can hear, some patterns start to emerge and then change and then disappear. Uh, the more you play with the two clock rates, uh, the more variation and sort of randomness you get. All right, in our last example here, we're going to be using the Logic Boss to drive the Tip-Top Z8000. Um, now any sequencers will work here, but um, you want to have more than one. And since the Z8000 has 10, it works out pretty perfectly. Uh, so I have a couple clock, uh, well, I have a clock and then uh, divisions from that clock coming into uh, actually all four inputs of the Logic Boss. Um, I find it's best in these examples to use um, something close to the clock rate and then very, very high division, so much, much slower of the clock rate for um, the other inputs. So we have three clocks coming in um, on the ins one, two, and three for logic operations, and then also a clock to control the linking between the two stages. Um, and then we're just taking various outputs um, from the logic boss to drive different sequences from the Z8000. Um, I really like the sound of taking the NAND1 and OR1 outputs of the A stage uh, and the uh, AND2 uh, or NAND2 um, or NAND1 of the B stage. So with these you get a lot more variation once the link kicks in. Uh, so we'll have one type of sound, link kicks in, and uh, the logic gate starts to go uh, a little bit faster. Um, you can pretty much use any of the outputs you want 
play around, um, see what you like best. This is my personal favorite. Uh, so I'm just going to let this play us out. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, check out the next one for the Wave Boss.